Many people have said that I have never met a stage I didn't like. <laughs> you can tell from the shoes. I never really grew up until about 15 years ago. 15 years ago this week, I was 35 years old and living in Seattle, Washington, working for Fox Sports. 15 years ago this week, my wife was expecting our second child. 15 years ago this week, my mom was thawing chicken in her kitchen when my dad heard a very loud thud. He ran out, picked up my mom, and my mom had this look, this desperate look of help me. She couldn't talk. She had had a massive stroke. When I went to her funeral, I was asked by my dad to speak at that funeral. I was the youngest of the entire family, but he said, you're the only one kind of sane enough to do it. He said, you speak in front of people all the time. So at the St. John's Episcopal Church, I got up there in the pulpit and looked around the audience. And I learned everything I needed to know about life just by looking around the audience. In the back was a checker from a Piggly Wiggly. You folks in the South know what Piggly Wiggly is. Laude, laude, the pig is faulty. In front was the president of the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. Over in the back was a security guard that was the guy who led everybody onto the island that she lived in. Two rows in front of him was a four-star general who had helped erect the Berlin Wall. And there back in the back, all four foot ten of her, was Annabelle. Annabelle was our housekeeper, my mom's closest confidant. And in the front row were the children of her best friend. Her best friend wasn't able to make it to the funeral because she had gotten sick. Those two were also the grandchildren of a president of the United States. What did all these people have in common? Sure, they knew my mom, but why would a Piggly Wiggly checker or a security guard or a housekeeper be in the same audience as the grandchildren of a president of the United States? The answer was simple, kindness. My mom was kind to every single person she ever met. That's pretty hard to say because people get mad at each other. We've heard about genocide. We've heard about uh, corruption. We've heard about all sorts of things, but my mom was nice to everybody. And she taught me about kindness throughout my life. Let me give you a few examples from her and some examples from today. My mom wanted to know where my sister had moved to. She lived on a horse farm, and my mom had never been there. So she calls up U.G. Sinkla, a very prominent gentleman from Charleston, South Carolina. U.G. is spelled H-U-G-E-R. <laughs> Just think about that. The name of his farm was Maybach Plantation. And my mom calls up and says, U.G., I want to know how to get to the farm. He goes, oh, Drusy, it's easy. You just go down Bohicket Road till you get to the Maybank Highway, take a left, and go right down till you get to the color church. Without missing a beat, my mom says, what color is it? <laughs> oh, you know the color church. No, I don't know what color it is. Could you tell me? Silence on the other end of the phone. See, she heard hate in this gentleman's voice, even though he was a very nice gentleman, but tried to disarm it. That little boy that I was talking about that was about to be born, 
He's my son, Drew. He's now 15 years old. And earlier this year at school, Drew had a boy come up to him and said, man, you're gay. You're a faggot. You're gay. And my son said, well, I thank you very much for the compliment. I appreciate that. Gay people are some of the nicest people I know. My dad has a lot of friends in theater that are gay. And their kindness is absolutely amazing. So I appreciate the compliment, even though I like girls. I appreciate the compliment. I don't think that boy ever talked to him again. <laughs> so you see, when you disarm hate, you have the ability to bring people to your side. Kindness to everyone, whether they are making minimum wage or they're the President of the United States. She treated everyone equally. My story here at SMU is I started work here in August and I helped open Moody Coliseum. It's ironic that I don't have a clicker doing real cool things with a video board because that's my job here. But part of that job is to create a great game experience at Moody Coliseum. So during the first women's basketball game, I got on the headset and told one of our promotions people that we knew that the Papa John's pizza time was coming up. We usually toss out pizzas to all the students and they're really hungry. I said, do me a favor, go to the front row, right by the TV table and deliver a pizza there. And the gentleman on the other end of the head said, no, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I said, please. Deliver a pizza over there. President Turner enjoyed that pizza. <laughs> I went over to him a little later and I said, I hope you like your pizza. His wife was picking it up going, this is a pizza? <laughs> but they both had huge smiles on their face. Treat everyone equally with respect, but treat everyone equally and we can all have a good time together. But the most important part of what I am is I am a hugger. <laughs> I hug everybody. Now I realize that in this day and age, as our lawyers will tell you, <laughs> that's not a proper thing to do. So now you have to ask permission. My mom hugged everybody. Maybe that's why I did it. But the last place I worked, right after the Jerry Sandusky incident came out, the athletic department put down an edict. No staff member will touch a student athlete other than a high five. <laughs> Have a great game. They thought that, you know, something was going to happen if people touch each other. They didn't think about a man by the name of George Hickman. George Hickman was the usher that sat outside of the locker room where all the teams would come out in the arena, the volleyball team, women's basketball, men's basketball. And George would give everyone a hug and say, have a great game. I'm proud of you. You're gonna go get them. But suddenly, George was not allowed to give hugs anymore. An 88-year-old Tuskegee Airman, who was the most inspirational person on the entire campus, was not allowed to give hugs anymore. Thankfully, the students revolted and gave him hugs anyway. <laughs> when did a hug, when did being kind become something that arouses suspicion? Everybody says, John, you're so nice. As though I'm about to be arrested for it. <laughs> being nice is what we are born to be but there's that aspect of society that says, you know, I can't live with the rules, I'm gonna break them all. Then there's us nice guys. 
I stand here in awe of all the amazing people that have spoken today. And we're coming towards the end of the day. Scholars, professors. I'm just a guy who makes videos. I went to school here. I learned a lot here. <laughs> what I learned the most is that my mom called me Charlie Brown for a reason. She called me Charlie Brown because she knew Lucy would pull the football back. She called me Charlie Brown because she knew I'd get frustrated and the school with wah, 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 wah. But she prepared me with kindness. And as I leave all of you today, on a beautiful Friday here at the place I love, SMU, I challenge each and every one of you to give not a random act of kindness, but give a kindness drive-by. <laughs> if you see someone on Facebook or Twitter that you haven't talked to in a while, send them a message. I hope your day is spectacular and I hope you have a great weekend. Because that kind of kindness is the kindness that grows. Love, hugs, and kindness. If you don't give them, you just don't get it. I thank you for your time.